Hello everyone, it's Shel C from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm bringing to you the hashtag event from Creative Arts Collaboration. This month, the month of March 2016 is Love Fantasy Art. That's hashtag Love Fantasy Art. If you put that into your search bar in YouTube and search, you will find all kinds of artists from all over the world making fantasy art and you'll be able to watch them and see what they're doing. So my project today is a mixed media art doll and she is a woodland fairy and I'm going to show you how I made her. I was I was wanting to do something different. I didn't want to do another art journal page or another canvas or something so I decided to make an art doll. So here we go. So I started out with a couple wooden pieces from Michaels and these are in the kids section. They just they're just packs of little pieces of wood in different shapes and I have several of those just lying around the house. So then I wanted to punch some holes in them and I didn't want to go look for the drill and do all that so I decided to try my teeny tiny hole punch that's supposed to be for paper and it punched through these thin little wood pieces just fine so I didn't have to leave my studio. <laughs> I was happy about that. And then I got some art wire this is a copper coated wire and I cut some pieces and just started attaching my two little two little pieces of wood together and I made a neck by twisting the wire and then I also added some arms and some legs with twisted wire and um, I did leave in this one little section here where I really messed up. <laughs> I was using my chain nose pliers on the legs and I, I used them to twist down there at the bottom and twisted the, the um, wire so hard that it broke. So don't do that. <laughs> I had to take it back out and it was all stuck in the wood and everything and then recut those pieces and um, not twist so hard the next time. I wanted them to be like straight and because as you can see the head's kind of wobbly and that was bothering me so I was trying to twist them really tight to get them not to wobble but I just broke the wire. This is 20 gauge copper wire. I, I didn't realize it was such pansy wire. I thought it was pretty strong and I wouldn't have a problem. Um, I'm using uh, the type of needle nose pliers that have round ends for jewelry making to curl the ends of my wires up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build up my body a little bit using basically what would be paper mache except for I don't want to go make the type of paste that you use for paper mache. I have the stuff but that would mean I'd have to leave the studio and get some water and da 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 and I'm just doing a little teeny tiny project. So I decide to use the uh, gloss um, medium from Liquitex as my glue and I just tore up some uh, book pages that I have from a paperback that I just tear up whenever I need book pages and I just started applying this paper I dip it and then uh, squeegee it off with my fingers my fingers got so sticky and so much glue buildup I had to peel it all off it was it was like <laughs> it was like peeling a sunburn it was really really amazingly thick but anyway I just went over this this whole little structure, this little armature for my doll with paper, just adding more layers, wrapping it around all the different pieces and covering up all the wooden sections of the body with paper mache with gloss varnish type stuff. I figured the gloss varnish would be a little bit stiffer than some of my liquid matte medium and stuff like that because it's it, it does save varnish on the bottle and that's the reason I picked that one and I don't use it very often so you know I can use it up it's not that big of a deal I don't use gloss very often I'm a matte person I like matte stuff but I'm gonna cut some of this out because you can see what I'm doing I'm wrapping and wrapping and pinching and wrapping and pressing and wrapping and pinching and wrapping and pressing and I'll just continue doing that um, for the whole body so I actually turned the camera off and didn't want to waste the battery. So once this is all dry I went and had lunch and uh, all that. 
think I even watched a television show. And, oh yeah, Ellen's Design Challenge. I had to watch the final for that to find out who won. <laughs> I like that show. I like anything that has uh, design or art on it, and that's a pretty good one. So I wanted the face area where I'm going to be making her face to be more smooth. So I cut out a piece of paper and just applied that with uh, matte gel medium. And then I've got some Titan Buff and a little bit of Liquitex Matte Medium, the liquid. And I mix those two, two together and then I'm just going to give the entire thing a coat of that. Her whole body is going to be coated in that that paint and this should seal up everything seal down anything that didn't get quite glued down and give her a uh, color um, I was going for kind of an olive tone darker skin not so pinky but it did end up still kind of pinky because that's just how I roll <laughs> so I did both sides drying in between and this is going to be my little fairy. I don't mind the text showing through a little bit on the paint. It's It gives it texture. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, that's the reason that I use text paper. Now I've got some fibers here and I've got a kind of a red and kind of a gold and kind of a brown. And I'm just, I'm not measuring. I'm just taking some out and then I'm going to wrap it around my hand like you would, like you're making a pom-pom. And just wrap all three of them together. And then I'm going to tie it on one end. Kind of paying attention to what's hanging down and what's loose. And then I'll cut the other side. And this is going to be her hair. This fiber has a little bit of a shiny gold thread through it so it looks pretty cool I, I'm kind of liking it then before I glued her hair on I figured I better get the face done because the hair would be in the way <laughs> so I started to draw on my face with my soft graphite pencil and trying to get everything even you know trying to make everything symmetrical although nobody's face is actually symmetrical we still try to make them symmetrical whenever we can <laughs> and I made her a big-eyed girl I like uh, big eyes and small noses for whimsical characters so she's got big eyes then I blended out that graphite a little bit just so that it wouldn't be bothering me when I was painting using a fun fantastic stick which is kind of like a a hard sponge on a, on a plastic stick. Still can't find my tortillion. Still think that's a silly name. <laughs> tortillas. Let's, let's blend our graphite with tortillas. I don't know. It's crazy. So then I just started in with my Neocolor 2s. And yeah, I'd already put that acrylic base coat on in the Titan Buff. So I just started building on that using different colors of my Neocolor 2 crayons. And blending that with either matte medium or, in some cases, acrylic white, titanium white acrylic, which is what I'm applying now. And you guys have seen me do this a million times if you've been watching my videos, but or if you've been watching any other anybody else's videos, there's probably a lot of people who do it this way. But I'm going to leave it in. I'm just going to speed it so that you can watch the process. Just uh, starting with uh, the shadows usually and I used kind of a tan color to begin with did some shadows then I went in with the white did some highlights and then I used the next darkest color which is the terracotta did some shadows and I just keep doing this um, back and forth back and forth sometimes drying in between and building up the skin tone in layers Someday, maybe I will like try to get a camera that's that can do close-ups so that you can really watch it because it's a little bit far away. But you get the idea. And I'm I have this speeded to four times. I'm going to speed it up to eight times so that uh, it goes by faster. This whole project took me one hour forty-seven minutes, 
to complete and that's including looking for stuff which I cut out you know I cut out all the time when I go wandering off to try to find this or that <laughs> so you guys don't just see a blank camera sitting there doing nothing <laughs> and I've spe I think I've got it down to 22 minutes so I did I am speeding it just to make it you know more crazy but you get the gist of the whole thing of what I'm doing. And I did want to, want to mention again that you can search love fantasy art with the hashtag and find all kinds of great fantasy art. I don't know. I bet you there'll be dragons and, um, you know, mermaids and I don't know what all people are making, but I'll bet you there's going to be a lot of stuff. I read fantasy books and urban fantasy all the time when I read because that really takes me to another world and it gets me away from the real world so I really like this genre and I'm excited about this hashtag event I think it's going to be really fun to go and find out what everybody's doing and also if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or subscribe or comment or share or do all of those things because that really helps me and it helps YouTube know that I'm making something valuable. So I would appreciate that a lot. I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers and I'm pretty excited about that and I'll do a giveaway when I get there, you know, and just like, I'd like to be able to say to my kid, hey kid, I have 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And being a teenager, he might actually be pretty impressed by that. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, if you haven't already subscribed, please, please do that for me. So I'm finishing up the detailing here with uh, Posca pins. I did white in the eyes, you know, to make the whites of her eyes. And then I did some black around her eyes and around the other features. And I also got out my tiny pit artist brush pin to do some of the detailing because this, this is a pretty small project. Her face is small, so it was good to use a smaller pen and then just the final highlights with the white Posca and there's her face and I slowed it down so you could see a little bit and then now that she has a face I've got a glow on her hair so I wanted her part a little bit off-center since I wear my part a little bit off-center and that's the way I like it so I put it a little bit to the side with some hot glue I have a love-hate thing with hot glue. I just, you know, if it didn't have all those dumb little spider webs, I would be much happier with it. Also, if it didn't burn me, I would be much happier. So you'll see me switching off between hot glue and Aileen's tacky glue, which I do love and should probably have bought stock in that because I've been using it since I was a child, and I love it. It's uh, great stuff. So I'll do something with aliens and then I'll switch back to the hot glue and try it again and then I'll do the aliens again and you'll you'll see me doing that off and on if you if you pay attention. So I got the front part of her hair on and then I decided she needed some in the back. So I made another little pom-pom thing and I'm gluing it to the back. I didn't make you watch me do the pom-pom again. Not that it's really a pom-pom, but it's the concept of a pom-pom. And that gives her something on the back of her head because it was looking pretty bald back there like she had alopecia or something. So Then I went and got some vellum paper and I'm going to make some wings because fairies have wings. And that's why. Of course there is an Ozzy Osbourne song about fairies having boots and I did not put boots on my fairy. So Ozzy Osbourne's probably going to come over to my house and say, fairies have boots. You know, it could happen. Crazy things have happened. I get out this uh, grid lace type of a stamp to put a little bit of texture on the wings. If you look at, at uh, dragonfly and butterfly wings up close, they have little cells all over them, like almost like scales. So I was going for that type of a look. And then I'm just sponging around the edges with some blue archival ink just to give them kind of that that blue tint and then I have my deco arts deco page um, 
collage medium which has glitter in it it's the one that has glitter in it I've been using this quite a bit lately I like it it's got this super fine glitter it's so cool so I wanted it to have glittery you know on the wings so I put that on there that made the vellum curl like crazy it curled like crazy like why are you doing that you stupid vellum <laughs> So I'm trying to smooth it out. I'm trying to, um, you know, make it flat. But then I finally just decided to just fold it and make it look like it had the little veins that that dragonfly wings would have, which helps it stay flat. And it, it actually is very dimensional the way it turned out. It wasn't intentional, but it's dimensional. I made a rhyme. <laughs> I should be a rapper. <laughs> okay, not really. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little bit crazy. And then I just glue all the wings together and then I set those aside because I'm going to put them on after I put on her dress. Be the last thing I glue on, probably. And then I had this little scrap of seam binding that I had sprayed with some sprays to dye it. And it was just laying there and I thought it might make a nice top to her dress. Remember, she's a woodland fairy, so she's you know, made out of leaves and she's kind of got autumn colors. So she's made out of autumn leaves was my plan. Although it's not autumn and I should have maybe made a spring fairy, but whatever. I wanted to use that orange little scrap. So I did. So I wrap it around kind of um, crisscross over her chest and then glue it down to the back. And that kind of creates the top of the dress. And then I get out my color boxes. I brought orange, brown, and green, but I only ended up using the orange and brown. And this is Jelly Deli paper. I just cut some little, very simple leaf shapes out of that. And then I've got some uh, jelly printed scraps left that are printed on newsprint and I get those out do the same thing I just cut some little simple leaf shapes out now this one has really cool teal color print on the back of it which becomes a little bit problematic but I work with it so once I have those then I start gluing them down across her waistline and I alternate between Aileen's tacky glue and the hot glue <laughs> because I just do. See how it's got that pretty teal print on the back? Well, it doesn't really match the rest of my colors. It's pretty though. But I end up just kind of layering and layering until you can't see it anymore with different pieces. So she's wearing a backless dress because that's where her wings go. If she had a dress in the back, how would her wings attach? Would she have big slits in the dress in order to let the wings go through? I don't know. But since I used that little seam binding scrap, she's got a, a backless dress, so it doesn't matter. So here's a little bit more of the jelly printing deli paper. Jelly deli. Deli jelly jelly deli. <laughs> Jelly Belly Deli? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so now you don't see any of that greenish teal print anymore. Because I just kind of kept layering under and over. Then this is a little metal finding that I had on my desk. And I put that in the center. It's kind of like a mandala looking metal thing. Then I got out some organza ribbon. This is uh, one inch wide, and I figured I could use it to make some little sleeves on the top of her dress. Just kind of little sheer, see-through, metallic-y sleeves. So I cut out little, the same little leaf shapes out of that. This one I have a little trouble. I can't get it to stick down, so I end up switching to the hot glue to stick it down because it won't stick. And I'm sorry that I keep going off the screen. Just this is close work and I have to bring it up close to my eyes. So I keep going off. 
Plus, I was in the zone. I was in the zone, so I wasn't paying attention to the screen. Then I like, cut out a couple more of those and put them on the front of her dress after I get her little sleeves done. Then this is a gold metallic cord, and I'm going to make her belt with it. So I just put a drop of hot glue on the back, and then I wind, and I wind that through the glue so that it sticks down. Her hair keeps getting in the way. And I just wind it and wind it and wind it around her waist until there isn't any left. And then I tack it down again in the back with the hot glue. Which is burning me, which is why I'm using my scissors to hold it down. <laughs> so now she has a little metallic gold belt. And then I add those a couple more little organza leaves to the front of her skirt just to blend everything together because this is fashion design this is fairy fashion design and now I'm going to put on her lee her her leaves <laughs> her wings her dragon wings onto her backless dress and then I'm fussing with her hair putting it in front or in back of the leaves to get it all straight trim a little bit of it where there's where it got some glue on it. This <laughs> is she, she cute. I love the wings. And then I've got some little plastic beads that are leaf shaped and there's a few little flowers so I'm just going to add those as embellishments. And then we'll be about done when I get done with that. Put a couple of them over the mandala me medallion, mandala medallion. Say that three times fast, and then a little bit in her hair, leaves and flowers. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. And here come the close-ups. Thanks. Bye bye.